Well, good morning, boss. E Church online, are y'all ready to praise the Lord with me? You know who I am. We've been here before. I'm excited. If you are, get up on your feet. We're about to go into worship and have a Holy Ghost good time. Can we start with prayer? Get the family together, get everybody together. Let's start with prayer. Gracious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you this moment. We give, the, give you this time. It belongs completely and totally to you. You are glorious and you are great. So we dedicate this mind to you totally and completely. We give our lives to you. We surrender to what you have for us today. Have your will and your way. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be. I can't hear y'all. Let us rejoice and be what? All right. Be glad. Come on. Let's go.
I'm waiting on you. We serve a great God, yeah? We serve a great God. Come on, lift those hands in his presence. Come on, wake up everybody in the house, wherever you are. We serve a great God.
overwhelming love in your life without him where would we be where would we be gracious father we thank you for your love in jesus name Come on and let's honor the Lord our God. Come on, let's spend some time in prayer this morning. Awesome God are you. Magnificent are you, O oh God. Wonderful in all of your ways. Come on and honor him with the fruits of your lips. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for you are honorable, God. You are magnificent, Heavenly Father. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one deserving of the praise, O oh God. There is no one as lovely. No one is faithful. No one is caring. No one, no one, no one is loving, O oh God. That I'm undead and you deserve everything that we have. Everything, oh God. You deserve our bodies. You deserve our service. You deserve it, oh God. Holy Spirit, we honor you. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for being consistent in our life. We thank you so much that even when we wanted to do what we wanted to do, you still stayed with us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for the promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And for that, we honor you. For that, we honor you. For that, we honor you. You have caused us to do things that we never thought imaginable. You have stirred up gifts in us. You have made ways for us. You speak to us when we're lonely. You've been our friend when we've had no one else to talk to. You've been a wonderful counselor. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, move in this place. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, transform in this place. Holy Spirit, by your power and by your authority, we ask right now that you would deliver in this place. That even before anyone gets prayed over or touched in the name of Jesus, you will start to pull up the foul ground. Holy Spirit, go before us. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Anoint this place. Pour out your spirit. Come on and worship the Lord. Come on out of the fruits of your own lips. Fill this place with the roar of your lips. Fill this place with the roar of your lips. Fill this place. Fill this place. That the enemy will know that he has no place here. Fill this place by the fire on your tongue. Holy Spirit, put fire upon their tongues now. Now, Holy Spirit, put a fire in our bellies now. this holy ground we call this sacred ground that I'm under it in shadow we call this ground anointed and gifted and we call it a pleasure oh God to be in the presence 
of the most high God, of the most high God, of the most high God. It is but a pleasure. It is but a pleasure, oh God. Oh God, we thank you now for everything that it is that you're going to do in this place on today. We thank you for what you've already started doing before we made it here. We thank you so much for the miracle signs and wonders that will take place in this, in this uh, location, oh God. And it will happen simply because you are God. Nothing else can happen but signs, miracles, and wonders when you are in the building. And so we thank you right now. Come on and thank the Lord, your God. Come on and thank the Lord, your God. Come on and thank the Lord, your God, like your life depends upon it. Come on and thank the Lord, your God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1 through 5. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. All right, you got it? All right, we still are looking at the church. Uh, last couple of weeks, or last week, uh, we looked at Genesis 1 through 5 and how it spoke to God filling voids, God filling voids, that God never leaves uh, places that we allow him access to, uh, places that we give him permission for. He does not leave those places empty. Uh, and we see this in Genesis 1. It talks about the earth being without form and void and darkness over the face of the deep. And God goes to fill uh, this void. He goes to uh, replenish based upon some what some theologians believe is the fact that the earth uh, was destroyed prior to uh, verse 2, verse 1 in Genesis. And so God comes and he fills this space. And then we look further, and he does the same thing with humanity. He does the same thing with humanity. When humanity has a void because of sin, God does not leave that void in existence. He sends Jesus to fill that space. And then when Jesus is uh, crucified and resurrected, uh, we are not left with a void yet still. Uh, but then he sends the Holy Spirit, and that is the birth of the church. Uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. We're going to read it one more time, and then we're going to go through it. It says this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was a light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and called the light, and the, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. All right, first thing, first thing, you all, again, God never leaves voids empty. He never leaves voids empty. And so when Jesus ascends, when Jesus ascends after his resurrection, the earth is again in a place where it is empty to a degree. Uh, it is in the same place it was between the New Testament and the Old Testament, where there is silence. Uh, throughout the Old Testament, Jesus and God show up randomly. God steps into situations. God uses the prophets. He moves in certain places, but he does not dwell among human beings. He is not a resident of earth. When Jesus comes, you now have God in the flesh. And so now God is dwelling, living among people. He's walking with us. He's talking with us. But Jesus, as God, is still yet man, and so he's confined to his body. So his body can only be in one place at one time. How I many of y'all ever wanted to be in more than one place at one time? 
you know how much trouble we would get in if we could be in more than one place at one time. Uh, you would send, you would, you would schedule your bodies to go sin um, and still be at work. Like, what are you talking about? I was here the whole time. Uh, and so Jesus is confined to that body, so he can only do what he's able to do in the place that he's in. Uh, and so now, even though God is with us, God is dwelling in the earth, uh, God has confined himself to a physical body. It's after Jesus ascends, after Jesus leaves, what he says to us prior to his death is, I won't leave you by yourself. I won't leave you comfortless. Um, that's why many times, you all, we have to really consider when we feel as though we are not comforted, when we feel as though we're alone, when we feel as though we're by ourselves, we have to remind ourselves that as a believer, as a Christian, you are not by yourself. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. The Holy Spirit is the one that walks with us, that dwells with us. So if you have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, you are never literally by yourself. You always have a help. You always have helpers because the Holy Spirit connects to the angels of God. The Holy Spirit connects to other believers. The Holy Spirit connects to resources. The Holy Spirit is the main dude that gets everything done when you need to get it done. And so you are never without access to more. Right. Uh, and, and so God says, I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you somebody to be with you. I'm going to send you a comforter. And so as he leaves, we are now at a place in the first chapter of Acts where there is a void again. Uh, there's no Jesus. God is not stepping in. He's not visiting. He's not hanging out. And there is no Holy Spirit. And so what are they doing between the time Jesus ascends and the time the Holy Spirit comes? Write this down. Write this down. The birth of anything of God. The birth. Actually, no, scratch that. You wrote in pen, my bad. Uh, uh, the conception of anything from God, of God, by God, can only be brought, can only be brought through the intimacy of prayer. Through the intimacy of prayer. Look up this way if you write that. Jesus tells them in Acts 1, he gives them instructions. And those of you all that are trying to figure out what that is, just watch the video from last week. Uh, in Acts 1, he tells them, I want you to go wait. And while you wait, I want you to be in this upper room. And when they're in the upper room, all they do, you all, is spend time in prayer. Uh, many times, many of us in our lives are not seeing God feel certain areas because we do not spend time in prayer. I can't stress that enough. You can talk to your mama. You can go to your therapy sessions. You can go to counseling. You can smoke all the legal weed you want to smoke. You can drink what you want to drink. You can, you can have sex with who you want to have sex with. You can do whatever you want to do, but none of it solves. None of it fixes. None of it heals. That's why every time you get through talking to your mama, you still feel bad. Every time you come down from your high, you still feel bad. Every time you come off of your drunken binge and you throwing up at the porcelain God, as they say, uh, you still feel bad. That means after every relationship, you still as jacked up as you were before. And some of us have made church a religion all by itself where we consistently will attend churches or a church and thinking that's going to solve something. But really, we have made a religious activity, an opiate to numb down our pain because we do not have the discipline and the fortitude to actually spend time in prayer with the God of our salvation who is the actual solution. Many of us have not walked into our destiny and seen the hand of God move because we're too lazy to actually pray. We will find excuse after excuse to do everything else, but we cannot fix our lips, our bodies, our minds to sit down and say, God, I am about to talk to you for 20 minutes. You wonder why that happens? Because the devil knows if you ever 
actually spent time intentionally talking to God and the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you that there's stuff that he's been tricking you with for the last 10 years that he won't be able to trick you with anymore. You keep falling for the banana and the tailpipe. You keep falling for the banana and the tailpipe because you have not talked to the one who can unclog every tailpipe in your life. Prayer, 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 prayer. People don't shout on prayer. People don't pass out on prayer. People don't flock to the building for prayer. But prayer is what ushered in the Holy Spirit into the earth that the church may be born. If the church was born out of prayer, then how do we think the church can be sustained without prayer? We want preaching. We want conferences. We want books. We want hands laid. But don't nobody want to pray. Voids are filled, watch this, by his word. We talked about this last week. Voids are filled by his word, but what brings his word but conversation? God never leaves voids empty. The earth had a void. Then the, the world, people, humanity had a void. Now, in Acts 1, believers have a void because Jesus is gone. There's no Holy Spirit. But Jesus says in John 14, he says, I'm going to send you another. I'm going to send the comforter. Now, watch this. We said this the other week, too, that the spirit of the Lord goes ahead of his will. Y'all remember that? We had a whole conversation about the gaze, about the gaze, about staring. You can stand in one place and your gaze lands somewhere else and you are looking somewhere that you are not physically present. You, your eyesight is somewhere that you are not. And typically, uh, brothers, we talked about this a little bit and some of y'all kept staring straight ahead like you've never had this experience in your life. And God bless you uh, for, the, for the mindset and the, and, the, and the ingenuity to know that and keep sticking, looking straight ahead. So uh, my wife don't look at me and notice that I, uh, I too have done this. Uh, but brothers, there have been times in your life where your gaze has fallen someplace that your body is not, but you wish it was. Uh-huh. We talked about God's gaze, how his eyes land. He sees something and his will follows after where he is looking. In the New Testament, you all, Jesus is the way. And Jesus overcomes the restrictive power of darkness to prepare the world for a release of God's creative power on a larger scale. Many times we have diminished Jesus to simply just yelling his name, but many of us don't understand why things don't happen when we say his name because you can say the name. I can say Sylvester Stallone. I can say Donald Trump. I can say uh, Michael Jordan. It don't mean nothing if I have no relationship with any of them. It only has power if I have an actual relationship with the name that I am throwing out. And many of us say his name, but we have no deep a relationship with him beyond the surface relationship of what we experience in church. You only know Jesus through the lens of every preacher you've known. You only know Jesus through the lens of what mama said and grandmama said. But some point in time, you got to know Jesus for yourself because it's not going to be enough to know Jesus through what Pastor Darrell said because my revelation of Jesus ain't going to always fit the situation that you are in. You got to know him for yourself to be able to say, Jesus is Lord. And the question becomes, is he Lord in your life? Is he just Savior or is he Lord? Is he just fire insurance or is he the one that commands your day to day? Is he just the one that you ask his opinion or is he the one that you yield to when he does not agree with what you want to have done? And many of us can look at our lives and the condition of our life speaks to the reality that we don't know him like we say we know him. We, we act like like we know him. We act like we cool with him. You ever meet somebody uh, that, that every time you see them in the club because around whoever's around uh, and, and they want everybody to know that they know you, uh, they act like y'all the best of friends? Anybody ever? Oh, okay, some of y'all the other person. <laughs> you the one that act like you know. Hey, man, this, this is my dog. This is my dog right here. This is my man. What's up, man, dog? Man, man when the last time we hung out? Was that two weeks ago? Man, man when you ordered that live, you like, I don't know you at all. I don't know what you, 
what you talking about? Uh, because they're trying to impress somebody. Uh, but watch this. That only goes so far, Pastor Margo. That is the equivalent of when God says those that want to pray but don't pray in private but want to pray in public, they get their reward. That's, that's what many of us do. We come into the club and we act like we know him. What's up, Jesus? My dog, my homie, man. Ooh, glory to your name. Oh, I bless your name. Oh, oh no, 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 no. And we make these ugly faces, these stank faces like God is really doing. Why, why the Holy Spirit got to stink? Why we got to make that face like God can just pass gas to be like, oh, it's so God. Oh, his glory. Oh, his glory. Oh, his glory. And you ain't bit more talk to him than the man in the moon all week long. And that's why God is not moving in some places in our lives because Jesus is the way. There is no way to the Father unless you go through Jesus. And many of us have tried to get to the Father through the personality of preachers. Many of us have tried to get to the Father through the culture of a church. We never have tried to get to the Father through the theology of our mama. We've tried to get to the Father through what grandma talked about. But you got to have a relationship with God for yourself that is not based upon church attendance, but it's based upon you being the actual body of Jesus Christ in the earth. God don't transfer his authority to bastards. God speaks his permissive word. Watch this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God does not release his word to random people. You wonder why you ain't got a word in a while? Maybe you've become random to him. I attend church, pastor, I come, I come faithfully, I go, I tithe, I do this, uh, yeah, yeah, a whole bunch of people in the club that don't know the owner. Because it is the relationship with the owner whoo, that gives you greater access to privileges in the gathering of random people. Let me say that again. Random people gather, but the ones with relationship get greater access. Uh, if you have anybody ever been to VIP, yeah, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. It's okay. It's okay. You ain't always been safe. Raise your hand. How many of y'all been in VIP behind that little velvet rope? Oh, Oh, come on, the blood, the blood, the blood. <laughs> uh, put your hands down, put your hands down. Uh, 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 you got behind that rope because you had a relationship with someone, watch this, that stood on the other side of the rope and was able to unhinge it and invite you into a space that you could not cross on your own. I hear the Lord saying that many of you, I am waiting to let you into a space, but you keep hanging with the randoms on the outer side of my glory when I am inviting you into a deeper place of intimacy. I'm not calling you just to be an usher. I'm not calling you just to be a greeter. I'm not calling you just to sing songs. I'm not calling you just to sit in a church every week and not be anything. That's what the random people do. But I'm calling you into the VIP section. I'm calling you into a place where you got access to me, where you can sit with me and talk with me, and I can sit with you and talk with you. There is a greater glory that I am trying to release on your life, and many of you are are so stuck in the randomness of culture that you think it's okay to just be a consumer Christian but nobody is asking for you to be a consumer. God says I want to pour out my glory on you and I just need two or three people in this house that can say God I want you more than I've ever wanted anything in my life. I don't want to be random but I want to sit where you sit. I want to dwell where you dwell. I want to know what you know. Reveal to me Father your glory Glory. Let me not be a random church person. Why are you here? Why are we here? Why? Write this down. Write this down. Why did I come here today? No, for real, write it down. And I'm going to give you 
60 seconds to answer. Why did I come here today? We didn't answer your question. Don't lie. <laughs> it's amazing how well we lie to ourselves. I went, look up this way after you, after you uh, stop pretending to write. Uh, I went to Target the other day. It's French. It's French for Target, for those of y'all that didn't know. I went to Target the other day, and if this has ever happened to you, I, I want you, when you realize this is, this is your testimony, I want you to just say amen. But you got to do it just like that old church folks, amen, right there with the hand. I went to Target the other day, uh, Eli, and I left the house because I needed something. I concluded that what I needed was at Target. And so Eli grabbed my keys and get in the car. And I started driving Mike to Target. On my way to Target, I saw an accident, saw a homeless guy. I saw a couple fighting in the car next to me. I saw a guy, I think he was on the phone. I pray he was on the phone. Uh, I turned into Tarjay's parking lot. Somebody cuts me off. And I had to pray in tongues. Because <laughs> I want to say some things. And after they cut me off, I finally drive down, and I find and drive around like four or five minutes because they are restructuring, rebuilding, remodeling Target. So I'm driving around this parking lot looking for a parking space because they then took up parking spaces to keep containers for the remodeling of Target. So it's less parking spaces. Renee, I'm driving around five. I'm driving around. I don't know how many minutes, but it was a whole song. A whole song played while I'm driving around. And so finally, I find Sarah the most perfect parking space. It's like two spots from the door. I'm like, look at Jesus. Oh, the angels are singing. A light shines on it. And I'm turning to go in it. And this person pulls in to my spot, Peter, after I didn't listen to a song and a half in the parking lot, after I didn't seen the crazy man, the homeless man, the car accident, and I almost cut somebody out, and I'm like, okay, Jesus, maybe it ain't meant for me to go to Target. Uh, I said, so you got about two more minutes before I'm just going to go home. Uh, and Jesus is like, dude, I didn't even tell you to take this trip, but cool, whatever. And so I'm driving around the parking lot again. Less than two minutes, I find another spot. So I'm like, this must be Jesus. Jesus is like, that ain't me. That's just happenstance. I'm like, well, whatever. I'm give you credit. So, you know, I get up. I go in Target. I'm walking in Target and I grab a basket, grab one of the little baskets, Margo, and I'm walking and I walk past the registers. I'm walking deep into Target. I'm moving with purpose. I'm moving with destiny. I get all the way around near the meats. And I can't remember Why I came to, oh, oh, thank you, thank you. I could, why in the world am I in this store? I had been through so much from the house to the store that I forgot why I came to the store. You woke up this morning and said, I need to go to the house of the Lord. Got up, you got dressed, read through some text messages, responded to some people, ignored some people. You find your keys, Eli, and you get in your car and you start the car. And on your way, you see two accidents. On your way, your stomach growls. On your way, the kids start acting insane. 
On the way, spouse gets on your nerves. On the way, you realize you ain't got no spouse and you lonely. <laughs> you tired of looking at that empty seat. You start thinking, I'm going to go buy one of the little dummies to sit next to me. And then you start wondering, how much do those dummies actually cost? And you start wondering, where can I actually find one of them dummies? Then a song comes on the radio because the radio tends to play gospel music and secular music on Sundays, which I ain't figured out that logic, but whatever. And now you're listening to the OJs. Thinking about that dog, Brandy. Pull up to church and you're like, man, it's a lot of spots to choose from, but I don't want to park far back, so let me go closer. Then you go closer, and the spots that you actually want ain't even there. So you're like, let me drive around the other side. And then you see our homeless friends, and you're like, oh, Lord, I can't believe Pastor got us over here in this neighborhood. These all these homeless people, and they're crazy. And you clutching your purse, and you ain't even out the car yet. And uh, Brothers, you sitting there thinking, like, I wish you would. I'll punch him dead. I'll punch him dead in his face. You you just angry. Ain't nobody even done nothing to you. You just want to fight. you just like, I'm going to punch this dude dead in the face. And, and then you get out the car, and you you get halfway to the door and realize you didn't forget got your Bible in the car, so you go back to get your Bible, and you go back and realize you ain't even got your Bible in the car, your Bible's at home, and now you mad trying to debate, do you, I want to go home real quick and grab my Bible, and you're like, no, that's stupid, I can just pull up my phone, but then you're like, I don't even know how to work that stupid app on my phone, maybe I'll ask one of them kids, and then you come inside the building, and you go the wrong way, and you're like, all these kids, and who is these people, and people saying hi to you, and you don't feel like talking, and now you're trying to figure out if you put on deodorant, because you can't remember if you put on deodorant, so you're trying to sneak sniff yourself to see if you got deodorant on or the appropriate amount, then you start praying maybe the deodorant from yesterday will carry over to today and the mercy won't have to be new, but it'll be here. Uh, and then you see somebody you wanted to see. You're like, ooh, she looked real nice. Ooh, he looked real nice today, but they don't notice you. And so now you mad because you're like, oh, well, yeah, no, nobody ever see me. And that's what I'm talking about, guy. You always got me. Pay. And then you come in, you want to sit in a certain place and the ushers don't even notice you. And like, this is what I'm talking about. I'm always invisible. And then you sit down and then you're like, oh man, we still got these stupid masks on. What these stupid masks? Who's singing today? What they singing today? What they sing? Oh, it's that young girl. Oh, she's Oh, I like her. She's so nice. Oh, but I don't know what about that other one up there. That other one just something about her just rubbed me the wrong way. I don't, I don't even I don't even understand uh, what's happening. Oh, they done singing already. Oh, that was quick. That wasn't like, that wasn't long at all. Where's Pastor? I don't even see him. Why he always coming here late? I'd be trying to figure out if he here or not. I ain't see his car. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't know. I know if so and so get up though, I'm not staying. I'm not staying though. No. If so and so if so and so get up, I'm about to leave up out this church. They are gonna get the Baptist finger. But if it's Margot, I might stay a little bit. She kind of cool. I like her a little. Bit. Bit. Uh, ooh, look at that my brother over there. Oh, look at that sister over there. Oh, I'm so sleek. Oh, uh, and then you, oh, what? Oh, oh, pastor here. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, why am I here? What? Why did I, what did I come here to get? There has to be a deeper focus on the things of God in this season. Some of you, oh, some of you, you have experienced a new freedom in your life. Not because God has set you free, but because the devil is setting you up. Because now when you consistently forget why you came, it lowers the value on coming. So now you can easily dismiss the gathering together in the body because the last five times you came, you ain't getting nothing. But you ain't getting nothing because you forgot what you were sent to get. And we forget what we are sent to get. Watch this. Because our mind ain't stayed on him. Our hearts are not stayed on him. Everything between the house and the door got between you and his glory, you and his will. Everything's been on your mind but him. Oh, thank God for my new boo. Where that boo come from? If it consumes all of your thoughts. 
Where did the job come from? If it takes up all of your time, what, what have you relegated to the place of idle status in your life that God can now not be the one that is the main thing on your mind so much so that you ain't got to be distracted, but your mind is so stayed on him that there's nothing can, can diminish your glory, your intention to get what God is sending you here to get. I know when you came in haphazard. I know when you randomly came. I can tell the difference between those that came desiring, came seeking, came needing, and knowing what they need and the ones that just randomly entered the club because the desperate ones come in with hands lifted. The desperate ones come in and ain't nobody got to lead you and worship. Your mouth is already open saying, God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, I glorify you. But the rest of our casual visitors, casual attenders, we just sit back and wait for somebody to serve us and you can't even remember why you came. But God says, seek me and you will find me when you seek Seek me with your whole heart. Many of us ain't found them because we don't even know why we came in the building. You came getting, oh, you get what you came for. And when you come for personality, you get personality. When you come for the preacher, you get the preacher. When you come for the building, you get the building. When you come for random folk, you get random folk. But when you come for the glory of God and his will and his righteousness and his kingdom, then you will leave forever changed. The world ain't changed because we come for candy. Church has turned into a bunch of trick-or-treaters. Why? Why? What's these mashed potatoes? What's this green stuff? I'll never forget. Yvette. Uh, my godmother, many of y'all don't know this, um, Jerry, I, I am allergic to vegetables. <laughs> I'm allergic to vegetables, um, and, and they're against my religion. Uh, my, my, my God said, thou shalt eatest thy bacon all the day long. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, Jerry, my godmother, decided that she was going to sneak attack me. And I like spaghetti. She, you know, I like spaghetti because it's, it's just, it's no vegetables. It's just, just meat and pasta, you know. It's an amazing meal. Um, and so she said, uh, uh, she said, son, you want some spaghetti? I said, oh, I love some spaghetti because I, you know, I love her spaghetti. And she makes the spaghetti, Dominic, and she sits the plate in front of me. And something in my shondo, <laughs> something in my spirit, and said, uh, I think my eyes, Peter, are discerning something. This stringy thing I know. This is the pasta. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know they've been in church a long time. The preacher talking about food. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or are they hungry? Uh -huh. I picked up the, the meat. I said, this I know. Paul I know. Jesus I know. But there was this other element. And I said, but who are thou? <laughs> and I said, uh, mama. She said, yes, sir. I said, didn't we not put two in the fire? <laughs> but who yet is this third? <laughs> They're looking like the sun of asparagus. <laughs> she said, boy, just eat that food. I said, I cannot eat. <laughs> what does not sit right with my spirit? And what's crazy is, I have no clue why I started telling y'all that story.
Oh, God. I have no, I literally forgot why I started telling y'all that story. So let's just go like this. God fills voids. <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit will bring back maybe. If not, you have a funny story. Do whatever you want with it. Watch this. God fills voids. God speaks. God gives his word. His word becomes tangible. His word becomes flesh. Uh, and, and when he speaks, he begins to release permission to his creative power. And the creative power begins to manifest what God has already desired. So when you come to this point in time, in Acts chapter 1, we are seeing a, similar, a similarity between Genesis creation and what God is about to do in Acts chapter 1. Because there is a void. God's eyes are on this void. And God God releases a permissive word. Now, what is the permissive word that God has released? Jesus. Write down. Jesus is the word that God released prior to his will manifesting the church. The Bible says in John 1 that in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. And the Bible tells us in John that the word was made flesh. So when God releases his word, who is Jesus, Jesus steps into the space where the Holy Spirit has only hovered but not manifested. There are places in your life, you all, where God has consistently hovered, but he has not yet manifested. There's a difference. Watch this. You're going to catch it. I promise. Anybody not understand anything about the weather? You will understand it. Clouds are the hovering of rain, but not yet the manifestation of rain. When clouds gather, they are hovering. When it rains, it is the cloud manifesting what it actually is. Clouds are made of water droplets. When they all accumulate, you see a cloud. The more water droplets that accumulate, the larger the cloud. The larger the cloud, it becomes a storm cloud. When it's a storm cloud, after a while, it becomes too heavy for just hovering, and it has to release everything that it's been holding. Oh, you're going to catch it in a second. That's why the prophet said after the drought, he said, I see a cloud the size of a man. Man's hand. Now, most people would not shout over that, but if you understand that a cloud is composed of rain, then anytime you see a cloud, you are looking at unmanifested rain. Anytime you see a cloud, you are looking at rain that is not yet released. You are looking at something that has not yet been dropped down from the heavenlies. And God says, I've been hovering over many of your lives, and that's why so you feel like it's dark days because it's cloudy. But if you understand how I operate, you would not be depressed at the cloudy days, but you will begin to shout at your cloudy days because you know that there's a rain that is about to be released in your life because God is not just going to hover. If he hovers, he's about to release. If he hovers, he's about to let go. If he hovers, he's about to show up. And so you better thank God for every place in your life where he's hovered. You don't know where he's hovered? He hovered when you were drunk and driving. He hovered when you were high and on that day. He hovered when you woke up in places you didn't remember. He hovered when you were about to get laid off. He hovered when they almost kicked you out your house. He hovered when you were homeless. He hovered when you were in the hospital. He hovered, he hovered, he hovered because he loved, he loved, he loved. He loved, he loved, he loved. He loved you when ain't nobody else like you. He cared about you when everybody else walked away. That's why he hovers over you night and day because he says, I'm about to release a deluge over your life that you ain't ready to receive. Baby, go get your cups. And the church has trained people woo, to handle umbrellas better than cups. We have given you umbrellas instead of cups. Because you don't want to, we, we, we don't want you to mess up your hair. We don't want you to be offended. We, we don't want you to get your Versace wet. We don't want you to get your nice hair done. We, we don't want to get your shoes messed up. We, we want you to be comfortable. And so we want to give you umbrellas to cover you from what God is supposed to release instead of giving you cups to catch it. Maybe you ain't seen the move of God because you're carrying an umbrella and not a cup. God, why the sun not shining? Fool, I gave you clouds. Uh, 
everywhere you drive now. Sacramento, California, they got on the doggone freeway. Severe drought. Conserve water. <laughs> you ain't got to hoard that that is an unlimited supply. Some of you have been holding the same words you got in 85. You ain't changed your vision board in 10 years. And you keep looking at the vision saying, God, why is it not yet manifested? There are many reasons this is possible, but I'm going to give you one. Because maybe you have covered, ooh, you have covered the seed in the ground with an umbrella. An umbrella of idolatry, an umbrella of religion, an umbrella of defiance, an umbrella of disobedience. And I don't care the level of disobedience. A drop of disobedience is straight up rejection of God. You have covered these things with the umbrella of idols, the umbrellas of our children, the umbrella of our jobs, the umbrella of our careers, the umbrella of our name, the umbrella of our fame, the umbrella of our social media accounts, the umbrella of our spouses, the umbrella of our careers, the umbrella of people thinking we're something that we're actually not and you keep pretending you something and you ain't that and people don't even care that you ain't that they don't even like you in the first place the umbrella of pretending the umbrella of laziness God deliver me close your umbrella set me free close your umbrella God saying to some of you parents, huh, you thought you've been protecting your kids, but you've been covering them from his reign. And then we get offended. We get offended when someone tries to take our umbrella. How dare you? That is not what I was taught. Maybe because you've been taught <laughs> by the one that sells umbrellas. God speaks. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus is the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the full grace and truth of his glory. Uh, for John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized and empowered and united with the Holy Spirit not long from now. Watch this. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh... How can we put it theologically? Let's put this in a theological picture. Those of y'all taking notes, write this down. Do it quick before I forget. The Father calls the clouds. He's the wind, the jet stream. The clouds are Jesus. Jesus is the clouds. I'm just giving you a picture. I'm just giving you a picture. Don't go out teaching this nowhere. You know, Jesus is the clouds. <laughs> I learned that in my church yesterday. Jesus is the clouds. You know, every time you see a cloud, that's Jesus. No, don't, don't. <laughs> just an illustration. Just making a point. Jesus is the cloud. Watch this. Holy Spirit's the rain. Holy Spirit's the rain. Now. Y'all got a little bit of strength. We go a little bit deeper. All right, watch this. When storms come, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We just flow in now. When storms come, storms, Anatole, correct imbalances in the atmosphere. What causes a storm in nature, is when there's an imbalance in the atmosphere. 
Storms are the are nature correcting the imbalance. This is why, Mike, storms <laughs> never destroy natural things. This, you, go, go ahead, I'm gonna give you a second. It's gonna, it's gonna. Storms tear up your car. Storms bust our windows. Storms make travel inconvenient. But storms don't bother grass. Storms may bend some trees but they grow more trees than they build. Storms don't mess up natural things because storms are natural things. Stay with me. Stay with me. When God releases the rain of the Holy Spirit, a storm enters the atmosphere. Because at this point in time, the Bible tells us it is clear even now, even back then, that the devil is the prince of the power of the air. He, he controls the atmosphere. So when God introduces himself, he is introducing himself to correct an imbalance in the atmosphere. Because the devil was never supposed to be the one in authority in this atmosphere. Man was supposed to be the one in authority in the atmosphere. So when Adam and Eve sinned, an imbalance is created in the atmosphere that God says I have to now correct this imbalance so when he shows up in storm clouds and he releases the rain of the Holy Spirit it is to correct the imbalance now watch this the only thing that will respond positively to the release of God's rain is that that has been planted in the dirt of the earth that is brought forth up when the water comes down you're going to catch it in a second everything that's not like the rain gets the destroy everything that is natural like the rain is natural gets pulled up let me say it again everything not like the rain gets destroyed and everything that is like the rain gets pulled up so when the rain of God is released in the earth the church sprouts up out of the ground because she is him and he is us and the Holy Ghost is in us as it is with God and Jesus the Father the Son that's why when God begins to move some of you spot up and some of you pull down. When God begins to move, some of you stand up and some of you get knocked down. Not because God doesn't love you, but because there's some stuff in your life that ain't natural. You know why you're super sleepy right now? Because the devil is putting storm shutters up. You know why you're hungry right now? <laughs> Y'all some hungry people. Y'all some hungry folk, boy, I swear. Y'all some hungry folk. Y'all shout anything with food. Y'all shout. Uh, The distraction comes. Remember, we said last week, remember we said last week, Margo, when order shows up, if we're used to chaos, it feels like destruction. The enemy comes to distract you and I in the moments when God is about to release rain. You ain't never been this fine in your life. You ain't never had this many attractive men try to holler at you. You ain't never had no sister look like Halle Berry come at you. You just brushed your teeth. <laughs> just got our teeth fixed. Just got your nails done. You ain't fine. Where you?
you think they coming from? All of a sudden, you got the most amazing job offer that requires you to work Sundays. Or makes you so tired you can't serve God. Where do you think that came from? All of a sudden, your biological clock ticking. You don't even like kids. <laughs> now you're so obsessed with having a kid by 40. Now you're killing yourself because you got to be married by a timeline. Now you're killing yourself because you got to own a house by then, or you got to buy a car by then, or you got to start a company by then, and you're reading books and buying books and going to seminars and going to conferences trying to be how to be 10 ways to be the best, most successful you. You say, Pastor, what's wrong with that? I'm just trying to better myself. I ain't saying nothing wrong with that, but you got to ask, why does it now yet consume all of you? When did your career become this obsession that now it has slowly pushed God out of the picture? But you don't even remember when you first came to God and you swore to God, God, I will do whatever you ask me to do. Send me where you want to send me. I'll serve you. You remember the times that you were laid up in places. I don't even look. Keep looking straight ahead. Keep looking straight ahead. Keep looking straight ahead. You were laid up in places, coked out your mind, high on this, high on that. And you said, God, if you get me out of this, I will serve you for the rest of my life but every time you did and every time he brought you out you are right back in the same place where you are fretting over stuff that God ain't got nothing to do with storm shut us the church uh, let's just jump into that what time is it did we get an extra hour I don't know, you know. Yvette said no real quick, real quick. Thank, thank you, thank you, Deacon Charles. Thank you. Let's let's. I know y'all visiting with us are like this place is crazy. We we got issues, but let's do this real quick. How many of y'all are with Deacon Charles and you say take my time? Raise your hand. All right, all right. Take the time. Look at the take the times. Raise your hand. All right, all right. Put your hands down. We won't get a no. How many of y'all? Are with the false prophet event. <laughs> they say there is not yet another hour. Raise your hand. All you heathens, raise your hand. Keisha don't care. Keisha like heathen. Heathen. All right, we got we got two. All right, you are outvoted. <laughs> On the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two. Verse 1 says this, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which was being distributed among them. And they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled, that is, diffused through their being with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out. All right, now, I want y'all to notice this. Write that passage down and write down Acts 1 and 5. If you haven't done that, write down Acts 1 and 5. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized and empowered and united with the Holy Spirit not long from now. All right, write this down. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers. The Holy Spirit empowers and unites. The Holy Spirit empowers and unites so that I may be a more effective witness. You word how you want. The Holy Spirit empowers and unites so that I may be a more effective witness.
Uh, Dom, bring that fucking, bring that thing back. We're going to try something different. Let's try something. I think it might be too small, but we're going to try it. But yeah, that looks small. All right. Your Your main purpose. Dun, 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 dun. It's like school. Your main purpose is to be a witness. Oops. That is your reason for living. All y'all that's trying to figure out your purpose, be a witness. Anything that distracts from being a witness is the devil. And watch this. You can have good devils. You can have very attractive devils with hazel eyes and good jobs and great credit. There are, fellas, brick house devils. Some of y'all are thinking about the person you're with now. Now, God does not, remember, God does not divide, but he, he brings order, okay? The Holy Spirit comes so that you and I are empowered and that we are united to be a more effective witness. The reason, hear this, that we gather, Hebrew says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as much as possible as the days grow darker. The reason we gather, y'all, who thank you, Holy Spirit. And all y'all is real deep. But I, I can worship God at home. My God is everywhere, Pastor. You said this. I can worship him in the bathroom. I can worship him at the United Church of Bedside Baptist. I can't worship him in first Pentecostal couch. Yes, you can. But let me tell you why that is ineffective in the global scheme of things. If we turn the lights out in your apartment, turn the lights out in your apartment, you can use your cell phone light to find your way. No big deal. If I could testify that we turn the lights out in this building one night, pitch black, your pastor included, he could navigate his way. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Ooh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. But not in church. <laughs> uh, he... I decided, Renee, that I was going to navigate my way in the dark with my iPhone. Hit the flashlight on the pole, and I started walking. And it was not long before I realized that I had come into agreement with a pole.
the other night we left here at the end of prayer and the lights was out and Yvette is like, why are you walking so slow? I'm like, because I'm traumatized. <laughs> I got to go gingerly into the night. Because, yo, my iPhone light was not sufficient for this degree of darkness. You want to be your iPhone light at home, but that is not sufficient for this degree of darkness. If you don't believe me, why do you think the devil fights you on coming together but he don't fight you to go to the casino. Devil ain't fought you to go over so-and-so house in the middle of the night when you know you ain't got no business going over so-and-so house in the middle of the night because last time you went over so-and-so house in the middle of the night, you almost ended up with another so-and-so. <laughs> Some of y'all will catch that on the sweet by and by. If you don't get it, then glory to God, because that means you ain't experienced it. <laughs> ain't nothing stop you then. You go to Walmart for no reason and will wander around Walmart for hours with the same two things in your cart. We will go to concerts and stand on our feet and yell at the top of our lungs for hours for somebody that does not know our name and does not recognize our face and you pay to be there. But yet for some reason when it comes time for the church to gather, our body is sore and we tired and we sleepy and it's raining and I got work and the kids got baseball and I'm sleepy and I don't feel like getting up and the tar is acting up and I don't... Yeah, 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 yeah. But you weren't tired when it was time for you to get some. <laughs> cover their ears, cover their ears, cover their ears. Watch this. Because the enemy's whole goal is to keep you and I from being effective and united witnesses. All right, let's hold on. Let me give y'all this other thing, and we're gonna we gonna we gonna spend we gonna pray. Dom, slide that over for me. The church. Write this down. The church is the manifested body of Christ. In the earth realm. The church is the manifested body of Christ in the earth realm. Watch this. With authority and power in all realms. So you and I our witness. The church is the witness. You and I are witnesses, a part of the witness. The devil's whole goal, watch this is to prevent the witnesses from being united as the witness. You ever notice <laughs> you stop liking your pastor when God begins to trouble some stuff in you? 
I ain't talking about me. This your sixth church. I ain't talking about me. You ever realize you get easily offended when God is trying to pull you into being a greater witness? You ever realize how amazing the pandemic made us realize our Sundays were free? The average pastor in America with a church over 100 people has to preach the same message at least five times for the whole of the congregation to hear it once. That's not an effective witness if God got to keep repeating himself. And then the church sits at home and says, I can't believe the world is so dark. I can't believe things are so bleak. I can't believe the homeless situation. I can't believe this. I can't believe that. And everybody's sitting at home with their iPhone light shining. Uh, all right, turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. I got to give y'all this before we, before we stop. Matthew chapter 24. Actually, Dom, do me a favor. Bring that light right there. Yeah, because that, that, that walking, that wasn't, that wasn't going to work. All right. Yeah, that's good. The witness. Okay. Matthew 24, verse 14. And this is what we're going to close on today. Matthew 24, verse 14. Y'all got it? Jesus says this. Jesus is talking. He's talking about all the stuff that's going to happen at the end. Now, look up this way first. Look up this way first. Your homework for this week. Those of y'all visiting, every we try to give y'all homework. So your homework for this week is to read all of Matthew 24. I want you to get an understanding of the end. When it talks about, and Jesus talks about there'll be wars and rumors of wars, da, 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 he's very clearly saying that is not the end. People run around talking about, oh, you know, the end is near because there's wars and rumors of wars and, and son against mother. And that ain't, no, that ain't the end. What Jesus says in Matthew 24 is that that stuff always happens because people are people and people, people. It ain't nothing but people, people leave. That's all. People are people. That's it. Right? What Jesus says in verse 14, though, is critical. He says this. This is the good news of the kingdom, the gospel. This good news of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, comma, and then the end of the age will come. Now, Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, Revelation says, and they, say they, say they, and they overcame him, the devil, by the word of their testimony and the blood of the lamb. What did Jesus say? And this will be pre preached throughout the whole world as a testimony. To all the nations, comma, and then the end. The end does not come, boss, until all of creation has been evangelized by the witness. Y'all got that? Y'all got that? Stop listening to these end time prophets making up stuff. The end does not come until all of creation has been evangelized by the witness that is made of the witnesses. Let me tell y'all what spiritual warfare is. Y'all ready? It is not yelling at demons to come out. We do that. Let me tell you why we do that. We do that because it makes you and I more effective witnesses. You and I can't be an effective witness 
because the witness is full of demons. You and I can't be a more effective witness if the witness is crazy in their mind. All y'all churchy folk, Pentecostal friends, can't be an effective witness if you're weird. Stop laying hands on people in Walmart. That's just weird. Don't do that. You get arrested. That's how Me Too started. Y'all catch it. Y'all catch it. That is how it started. We have to, listen, look this way. Have to be the best vessels we can be to be the most effective witnesses. The most effective witnesses make up a more effective witness. Spiritual warfare, hear this, is the devil fighting to delay the end. He don't lose until the end. Now, technically, he's already lost. But he gets to play like he ain't lost. <laughs> All spiritual warfare is the devil kicking the can down the road. Because the witness is made up of witnesses who are the most effective way to win souls. If he can stop and divide and diminish the power of the witness by dividing and diminishing the power of the witnesses, then the witnesses do not become effective in the evangelizing of lost souls. And the longer he gets to play in the playground because the church is not being who the church was called to be. You are not called to just have the title of prophet. You're not called to just be an apostle. You're not called to just sit in a green chair, but you are called to gather in a place that the light may band together and be encouraged one among each other that you go back out into the darkness and become a more effective witness as a part of the witness and that is spiritual warfare the greatest attack against the enemy is not just devils coming out of me but us commanding souls out of darkness into the light of the father that is what the enemy is trying to fight y'all we we have belittled the value of his kingdom. And we've belittled the value of his kingdom under the weight of our desires. He said, you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood, a consecrated nation. But what happens, Peter, when the chosen don't choose? God says, then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea. And the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. And when your fathers cried out to the Lord for help, I put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your own eyes, you saw what I did in Egypt. You lived in the wilderness a long time. Then I brought you into the land of the Amorites who lived on the other side of the Jordan, and they fought against you. And I gave them into your hand, and you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them for you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab arose and fought against Israel and he sent Balaam and the son of Beor to curse you but I would not listen to Balaam therefore I made him bless you instead of curse you you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho and the citizens of Jericho fought against you as did the Amorites and the Prezerites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Gershites and the Hivites and the Jebusites but I gave them all into your hand you sent hornets, hornets came after you, but I gave power before you, which drove the kings of the Amorites out. But it is not by your sword, it was not by your bow, but by my hand. I gave you land which you did not lay before. I gave you cities you did not build, and you live in them. You eat from vineyards and olives that you did not plant. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Remove the gods of your daddies and your mamas and your grandmothers that they served on the other side of the river in Egypt 
and serve me. If this is not acceptable to you to serve the Lord, then you choose for yourself this day day whom you will serve whether it will be the gods of your father the gods of your culture the gods of your cousins the gods of the Amorites or you will serve me but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord is there anybody in this building that can say in spite of what I've been through in my life I am making a decision right here and right now to serve God with every fiber of my being and make Maybe you don't realize, but God's been good to you. He's been so good to you. Uh, things that you don't deserve, he has done for you. He's been so good to us when we were in Egypt. He was good to us when we were drug addicts. He was good to us when we were alcoholics. He was good to us when we were stuck on pornography. He was good to us when we were in our addictions. He was good to us when we were in our foolishness. And yet every time he brought you out of the hand of the enemy, and now we sit up in his house lazy, looking lethargic like we tired and we have done something that we, oh, we I just say, God, you can be grateful that I'm here. No, we should be able to say, God, I will bless you at all times. Your praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul will make her boast of the Lord. The humble thereof shall hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Are there any worshipers in the house? Are there any praisers in the house? Are there any grateful people in the house? Is there anybody here that says, God, I owe you my life. God, I owe you everything. God, I owe you my mind. God, I owe you my body. God, I owe you my will. Is there anybody ready to dedicate. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Give them. Give them. Give them yourself. Give them yourself. You are the witness. That's why you've gone through hell, because you can be a witness. So, so you can tell men and women how God can deliver you from prostitution. You've been a witness. So you can tell men and women how your degree don't matter, but the Holy Spirit. You can tell men and women how your job don't matter, but it's the Holy Spirit. You can tell men and women what it's like to be stuck on drugs out of your mind, not knowing where you are, but then suddenly in the middle of your hell, God stepped in and saved your soul. Is there a witness in the house. That's why we gather. Huh? We gather to tell stories. Come on, open your mouth. We gather to tell stories. We gather to tell stories. Every one of you here is a witness. You're a different witness. Everybody here ain't been through what you've been through. But he saved you to be a witness. 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 That's why the devil's fighting you. He don't want you to snitch. He don't want nobody to know they can get out of it. He don't want anybody to know they can be free. He don't want nobody to know that they can be delivered. He don't want them to know that they can be a witness. But you're a witness. You're a witness, 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 you're a witness. witness. Come on, come on, come on. Are there witnesses? Are there witnesses? What has he done for you? What has he done for you? Get it on your mind. What has God done for you? What has he done for you? Don't look at me. Don't look around. What has he done for you? What has he done for you? How many times were you locked up? What has he done for you? How many men have used you and walked out on you? What has he done for you? How many mornings do you feel insufficient to even function, but yet you make it through your day and everybody thinks you're okay? That ain't you, baby girl. That's the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, empowering you even when you don't call his name. What has he done for you? Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? 
How many times has he kept you? Is he worthy? Your light should have been cut off. Is he worthy? You should not have the car you have. Is he worthy? You shouldn't have a roof over your head. Is he worthy? How many times did your marriage almost fail? Is he worthy? How many times did your kids get locked up? Is he worthy? How many times were you almost mugged? How many times were you robbed? Is he worthy? They broke into every house but yours. He's worthy. They broke into your house and didn't kill you. You're, he's worthy. Your body's been had. You had cancer the last three years. He's worthy. Come on, come on. Come on. Don't look at me. Worship him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. The enemy's trying to prevent you from being the witness you're called to be. His goal is to divide the church. His goal is to divide the body. You're a witness. Come on, come on. Come on. Press yourself. Push yourself. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you, God. Glory to your name. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. Oh, witnesses, 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 witnesses. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Those of you that are standing and those of you that are seated. Actually, yeah, everybody. Uh, sure. Security, y'all come in for a second. Security, come in here for a second. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Everybody, heads bowed, eyes closed. Come on in, come in, come in. The front door will be all right. Y'all close your y'all secure, y'all close your eyes. St just stay where you are. I just want y'all to participate. Close your eyes, bow your head. Yeah. Everybody in the room, everybody in the room, heads bowed, eyes closed. Everybody. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I beg of you, heads bowed, eyes closed. Holy Spirit has given an opportunity us, opportunity to us. In this moment, every head bowed, every eye closed, just listen. I want you to forget how long you've been in church. I want you to intentionally ignore how many roles you've had. I want you to forget your job title. I want you to intentionally ignore everything you know of yourself. Hear the invitation of the Holy Spirit. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Just hear. The Lord says, I extend to you this day the opportunity to once again choose. Holy Spirit says many of you have been taught, trained 
to attend church, to serve church, to build churches. But you've never known yourself to be the church. Holy Spirit says, I invite you to choose. Every person here, heads bowed, eyes closed. Hear the gospel of the Lord. Jesus, God loved you so much that while you and I were in our sins, he died for you. He did not die for you to just come and randomly gather with no purpose. He did not come for you and I to accumulate wealth. Jesus did not die on the cross that you have the family you wanted or that your kids would be great or Jesus died on the cross so that your soul, my soul, would always dwell with him, even when these bodies die. And the Holy Spirit says to each of you right now, forget yourselves. Take inventory. I raised Jesus from the dead. So that you will walk in authority and purpose and be more than you ever thought you could. So now, our heads bowed and eyes are closed. I challenge you to put aside your religious beliefs. And if you know, you know, you sense that the Holy Spirit is pushing on you, that either you do not fully know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or you have strayed in your commitment to him, but you want to choose. The old folks would say, don't play with it. But if you want to choose again afresh, I want you to lift your hands. Come on, stretch your hands. Don't be ashamed of nobody looking. Stretch. Those of you here, you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. All right, pray this. Everybody with their hands stretched. Say this, dear Jesus. Come on, say it. Dear Jesus, I confess all of my stuff. Forgive me. For straying, for walking away, and being disobedient to your will and your desire for my life. Father, I ask that you would have mercy on me for every choice and decision that went against your will. I thank you, I thank you for every time you've delivered me. I thank you for every time you've kept me. Now I ask, Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. Holy Spirit, do what you want in my life. Remove, build, 
tear down, restore, pluck up, pluck out, however you choose. I yield every relationship. I yield every friendship. I yield every thought. I yield my heart. I yield my mind. And I yield my will to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Come on, Holy Spirit, have your way. Make me the best, most effective witness for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.